So what generally comes in, puppy dog comes in or a kitty cat and it'll have a complaint, what we call the chief complaint. And it may be something such as limping or vomiting. Um, so we'll, first thing we'll do is get a history and the history is a very important part of the overall process. A lot of times we'll talk with the client and we'll kind of get a story. We really don't want a story, we want kind of answers. So okay. it's our job to kind of sift through the minutia and get the actual complaint. So when, when you bring a puppy dog in, let's say for vomiting, well, we get a lot of times we get a history of, well, vomited twice last Thursday, and I think it was Saturday vomited. We'll just say, how many times? Has it got worse? <laughs> Has it gotten better? Is there any food in the vomit, let's say? So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll ask questions, not that we're being rude, but we just want to try to get a history of what's going on. And then the next thing we'll do is a physical exam, which, as far as diagnostics, is probably the most important diagnostic tool there is, uh, is a physical exam. So. You know, we don't have to spend a lot of money to do that. It's a very useful thing. So part of our physical exam will be, well, every veterinarian might have their own process, but we'll, me, I like to start at the head. Okay, we have Bo here in case we yep. didn't so this is Bo. Bo before. And Bo's what kind of dog? Springer Spaniel. Springer Spaniel. And okay. then Bo is four, year, four years old, he's neutered. So we already could kind of see that Bo is bright, he's alert, he's looking mm -hmm. around, he's aware of his surroundings, um, you know, He's not depressed. He's not lethargic. He's Looks pretty good. He seems fairly yes. bright-eyed, well, bushy-tailed. He wants to say yes, hello to everybody. I know you. So that's yes. part of the physical exam right there. You mm -hmm. know, he's not depressed. He's not one eye is looking one way, another eye is looking the other. So for me, I usually start at the head, and I just quickly notice his eyes. Both pupils are the same size. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of pick up the little bit, see if the sclerosis are yellow, or if there's a lot of uh, vasculature making an appearance. We'll kind of take a quick look at the mouth. Good gum color, nice white teeth. Quickly kind of look at both sides again, see if there's any obvious missing teeth. Um, he's got, we'll take a quick look in their mouth. If they come in for vomiting, we might look in their mouth a little more for under their tongue, mm -hmm. see if there's any foreign body, a string, anything like that. So that quickly we already said, okay, he's got no nasal discharge, his pupils are equal and reactive. You can see they're smaller now than they mm -hmm. were when he was nervous two seconds ago. His sclerosis are nice and white, they're not injected. His gum color is good. We've already kind of took a look. He's kind of slimy, just like he's supposed <laughs> to be. So his hydration, that already told us his hydration is probably pretty decent. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look at his ears. Um, we're looking for inflammation. We're looking for, you know, has he been itching them? Do they smell? Is there discharge? Both ears look good. The, the initial physical exam, starting at the head, we're come down here, check the lymph nodes. We're looking for that. We're already looking at his skin. Uh, any kind of bald spots or any place that might be inflamed, any lumps, bumps. The owner will usually tell you where the lumps mm -hmm. and bumps are. Uh, but lymph nodes that we can palpate, up here, prescapular ones are pretty easy to find. Back here, popliteals. We're looking for any lymph node enlargement. We're looking for, of course, already to determine whether they're too fat, too thin, mm -hmm. or just right. Bo here looks perfect, so he, uh, he's, he's uh, in good condition. We'll also palpate the abdomen, and generally, Every dog's different, but if they're nice and calm, like Bo, you can really feel a lot of internal organs. So, our, our, you know, we can tell whether his liver's enlarged, hmm. for instance. If his liver's enlarged, it'll be actually pushed back behind the rib cage. He's relaxing, so I can tell he, his liver's not enlarged. I can feel his spleen, because he's relaxed. Some dogs, if they're real tense, tense up their abdomen, you really won't be able to feel that. Come down here, I'm also feeling the small intestine. Is there any big old thickenings? Uh, you know, if he came in for vomiting, I'm really checking this because hey, maybe he ate a rock, maybe he ate mm -hmm. a sock, maybe, you know, does he seem painful when you pop at his abdomen? That's a very uh, common uh, physical exam finding. They, they tent up, they're actually in pain. Um, we'll also kind of take a peek under the tail, looking for any gross, any, any uh, and you know, if he's licking back here, he's doing a lot of licking, the white hairs will show saliva staining, just like his feet, if he was licking his feet, they would turn kind of a... Is that what that is, whenever yeah, they have that color to it? Like yeah, a pinkish kind of a color? Liver, yeah. liver color, yeah, I guess. Right. That's the saliva staining, okay. so if he was licking around his butt, we'd see that. If okay. he's licking his feet, we could see that on the white-haired dogs, yellow-haired dogs, a black dog, you're not gonna see it. Um, but we're looking for areas of inflammation. So we pretty much did that physical exam that quickly. So good body condition, doesn't look like he has any skin lesions. His lymph nodes are okay. He, uh, they're not enlarged. Mm -hmm. He's got good muscle tone, you know. You can see he's got, uh, he, he's got good uh, pelvic musculature. He, 
you know, looks like he's as strong as an ox. So, and then <laughs> probably the last part of the physical exam, we already, let's say, we, the technicians usually already take his temperature, you mm -hmm. know, when they get the history. So we're gonna do a, uh, we're gonna scald the heart and lungs. So we like to do this without him panting. And while we're doing that, we'll also put our fingers on the femoral artery to make sure that there's a pulse with every heartbeat. So when we're listening to the heart, we're listening for the rate, okay, how fast it's beating, and the rhythm, okay? So a normal rhythm will be kind of a steady, faster, slower with the respiration. That's called a sinus rhythm. So we're looking for that. If there's an irregular rhythm, we try to characterize it as, is it regularly irregular, meaning it follows a certain pattern, or is it just irregular or irregular? Uh, doesn't have no rhyme or reason. We're also listening for heart murmurs, which would be abnormal sounds between the lump, the lub dub, and. Uh, Are heart murmurs pretty common? Very common. Uh, Bigger dogs, small dogs, doesn't really matter. Basically, probably more so in older dogs. Mm -hmm. okay. um, basically, a murmur is just blood flow going the wrong way. Right. So we're hearing that regurgitation. Most of our puppy dogs, a murmur is from a valvular issue, not mm -hmm. a muscle issue. In kitty cats, it's the other way. It's, they usually have heart disease that involves the actual muscle, not the valves. So dogs are like us. They have more valvular disease. 